I'm Dr. Webb. We're going to be talking about that dreaded belly fat and why some of you are having so much struggle and so much frustration even though a lot of you have changed your diet, maybe cutting calories, uh, maybe going to the gym, maybe you've even hired a personal trainer and you are becoming frustrated and I feel sorry for you because you're working on a symptom and not the underlying cause. What I mean by that is weight in itself, especially the belly fat, there's an underlying health issue, health issues that are creating this problem. It's not simply going to the gym and exercising going to straighten it out. Now, with that said, exercise but in a proper form of exercise and proper nutrition is important. It is part of the system of, of, of resolving this. But let's talk about why you're having this problem or someone you know or why if you're watching this video. When we look at how we retain fat, fat is really stored energy. And when we retain it in different areas of the body, there are a lot of underlying issues that can create this. One of those issues is hormonal imbalance. Now, there are different hormones in the body that can affect our, our, our weight, belly fat, etc. Uh, when we talk about fat storing type of hormones, there's actually 600 different hormones in the body. We're just going to talk about a few here. But what I want to talk about is these fat storing hormones. Cortisol. produced by the adrenals is a fat storing hormone, it's a stress hormone. Estrogen you ladies have a little bit more estrogen than, than guys so you're going to have a strike against you here with estrogen so whether it's birth control pills, whether it's just being a woman and having a higher estrogen, whether it's some of the uh, endocrine disruptors within our food substrates, the different hormone compounds they put in our milk products, our meat products, soy, all of these increase estrogen. So we're seeing um, not only the belly fat problem but weight in the hips, etc. even with men developing more breast tissue, etc. So estrogen is a fat storing. Uh, insulin Insulin is a fat storing hormone when it's produced in spurts. Now, insulin produced actually on a regular basis where we keep our blood sugar level can actually be anabolic, which means tissue sparing. So we don't want to think any of these hormones are bad. They're, none of them are bad. It's when they have an imbalance or when they're elevated. So if you're having a lot of stress, whether it's emotional stress or physical stress, chemical stresses, the way that we're eating, cortisol can go up. And so now we have this fat storing mode. Another thing that you might be surprised about with cortisol, stimulants like coffee. If you had a cup of coffee first thing this morning, especially the way the Americans drink it, you stimulated those adrenals and that cortisol and now you're going to be more in a fat, fat storing mode. You may have had a stimulant there, but what you have to understand is the regular coffee that's getting you going in the morning is really driving those adrenals and wearing them down. And so now we're going to start having problems with gaining that fat and losing energy midway through the day. And by the time we get home, we're, we don't have energy for our family and we're having sleeping problems, etc. cetera. Um, so stress hormones. And there's, you've got to test these hormones. You can't just simply, well, I think I'm an adrenal type. Very likely you may be, but there's a way to test them. Estrogen, again, as a woman, you're going to have a higher amount. As you move into perimenopause, those are, hormones are going to change, but you, what you have to understand is even in perimenopause, you still produce estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. It's back to those adrenal glands again. Your adrenals are what keep those hormones in check, and so if they're not in check, if the adrenals are, are, are fading down because you have adrenal fatigue, then you're going to have more of these perimenal uh, problems, uh, premenstrual problems, etc., menopausal symptoms. And then we have the insulin. So if anything that we're doing that spikes that insulin, so let's say we have a Coke, or we have a big glass of orange juice, which is pure sugar, uh, simple carbohydrates, anything pretty much uh, that we're eating that's not whole foods that are processed foods in boxes and, and cans and sodas and things like this, high fructose corn syrup, this is a killer. So if you're taking it in, or if your children are, you need to get it out of the house. High fructose corn syrup, is one of the, if not the leading cause of diabetes in this country. And it doesn't digest like regular sugar. It digests like ethanol, which can affect our liver. Ethanol is, of course, alcohol. So if we look at this, we're trying to lose body fat. We're going to the gym, but we're having maybe too much of a stimulant, too much coffee, too much stress in our life, too much adrenal stress. 
if we are had a history of using hormones or we're present, presently on them, and they may be that imbalance of estrogen, or maybe we're taking in too much soy, which is high estrogen, then we've got another one elevated. And if our diet, maybe the calories are down, but you're taking in more of these processed types of foods, or even artificial sweeteners, artificial sweeteners still cause an insulin spike. So if I got up this morning, I had a cup of coffee, and I have a bowl of cereal and a glass of orange juice, the coffee caused my cortisol to go up, my milk, unless it's organic milk, is high in estrogens because of the compounds put in, so my estrogen went up, and the refined cereal and the orange juice caused my insulin to go up. So even though it might not have been very many calories, I blew my chances of burning any kind of fat today, especially the belly fat. And as the belly fat gets worse, the complications are going to lead to insulin resistance, which of course can lead to diabetes, and now we have a more of a problem. So it really becomes a vicious circle. So I, I know in a very short period of time, I just barely touched on this. If you want to know more, you can, you can go into, um, into my sites. You can register one of my presentations and really learn everything about every, uh, whether it's hormones, what's the proper way to exercise? Are you exercising improperly? I can tell you now, if you're focused mostly on cardiovascular training, you're not going to change things. You're not going to transform your physique. So we talk about detoxification, nutritious, nutrition, um, nervous system function, the different pillars of health that impact our physique. So learn more that way. But I hope this at least got you thinking about some of the struggles and the frustrations you have and helps you open up to what you need to really start looking at if you want to conquer this. So hope you enjoyed. We'll see you soon.